You're welcome back to the gavel. The Acting Auditor General of the Federation, Mrs. Florence Anyamu, surprised us with the news that the River Niger is drying up. The Auditor General is warning that the River Niger is drying up gradually on the Onitsha side and that parts of the river is also drying up in other countries. This and other major environmental challenges were brought to the attention of a Senate president during the week. The Office of the Auditor General for the Federation is to partner with the African Organization of Supreme Audit Institutions to jointly audit the River Niger. The Secretary General of the African Organization of Supreme Audit Institutions made this known during a meeting with the Senate President, Senator Bukola Saraki, in Abuja. This is coming a few days after the Acting Auditor General of the Federation, Mrs. Florence Anyaou, warned that the River Niger is drying up. These and other environmental issues are at the forefront of discussions at this meeting with the Senate leadership. The African Organization of Supreme Audit Institutions, which has concluded auditing the Lake Chad, is seeking the support of Nigerian's parliament in addressing environmental problems in the country. The major output of this event was the adoption of Agenda 2030, which is a global development program with 17 sustainable development goals to be implemented by the year 2030. Yet, the observation is that despite the signing of multilateral agreements on the environment and established institutions, current scientific studies reveal that many of the planet's ecosystems have rapidly deteriorated over the last 20 years. At the same time, citizens have increasingly expected that organizations that hurt or destroy the environment be held accountable for their actions. Many citizens feel that the government Declarations concerning the environment and sustainable development should be subject to independent audits to assess the extent to which they are implemented. Senate President Bukola Saraki assured the group that the Senate would work with the members to ensure that the task of auditing the environment is successful. I think the key point you said, some of the uh, agreements we go around, we talk about, we sign, we, we, we some resolutions. The question is that how far have they got into regards implementation? Who is making sure that they are being implemented? Uh, by the time we leave all those conferences as, as politicians, we, are, we feel happy with ourselves, we shake hands, we take the pictures. But the real issue is that those commitments, are they being met? And I think there's an area that truly uh, what you're doing will play a key role in ensuring that some of these environmental promises, uh, environmental solutions that we put aside address. In Nigeria, uh, you talk about deforestation, you talk about uh, oil spillages going across, and it's clear that it's affecting the lives of our people all over. Uh, who is doing those audits to tell us, look, where we are and what we need to do? I want to commend the effort that you're doing. I want to assure you that uh, we ourselves are ready to cooperate and work with you to see what else we can do as, as, as Parliament to, to make your work easier and to, to make, bring more success to what you're doing, because I think that will go a long way in helping the uh, our drive in making the uh, environment much, much better. Speaking to journalists after the meeting, the Secretary General of the organization explains why the organization took the decision to audit the River Niger. It's going to begin next year, 2017. As I say, it's gathering the information first. What are the regulations? What are the laws governing the Lake Chad uh, Basin or the, the uh, River Nile Basin? And then on top of that, we, the team will go on the ground, get its findings, analyze the findings, then match march the findings with the, uh, the uh, instruments, the laws regulating, and then come out with recommendations for the different countries. Niger, Niger. River Niger, sorry. So why, why the audit of the River Niger? Why? Because until we audit before we know what's happening, we want to audit every uh, environment to see what is happening in every environment and where there is any risk at all. There have been reports that President Muhammad Buhari would be seeking emergency powers from the National Assembly to push his planned stimulus for the economy. Now, this is one of the things which Nigerians would be looking out for when the National Assembly resumes on September 20th. That is, if the president will still go ahead with making this request from the National Assembly. 
We spoke with the chairman, Senate Committee on Finance, Senator John Enor, to get his views on the president's proposed request for emergency powers. The National Assembly has had cause to deal with um, matters of emergency in the past. You know, so it, it, it became, you know, obvious. And I think that when we're talking about when the discussion became that of sending some requests, you know, to get some emergency powers. And then this was not to fight a war somewhere, but, you know, over matters about our economy. I think that, you know, it wasn't, I mean, they, it wasn't totally strange. It wasn't, I mean, I didn't feel odd about it, you know, not because I also concluded at the same time that that was what was required, but that I didn't feel odd because it wasn't something that would ordinarily be unthinkable given the situation that I believe that we found ourselves and we now find ourselves. Now, do you think this emergency powers, do you think is required, be required at this point? As a member of the 8th Senate, this request hasn't come, formally speaking. I mean, all what we know, all what I know about it is the bits and the pieces that one keeps reading, you know, here and there. You know, so I'm a little bit unfamiliar as at now over what and what is being sought for. You know, so I won't therefore be very categoric in terms of saying it's required or it's not required. I think that we need to look at the details of what the request is at all, you know, to be able to. I mean, there are quite some of the indications that have come, right, that are out there in the public space that I would outrightly say, no, I mean, you need to do so. You know, so I mean, that's what my response to this is going to be. I can't be very, you know, general and say no or and say yes. I think that you need to pick them, you know, case by case basis, you know, one by one. What and what are the details of what the request, you know, has to do with. Now, going into specifics of what, you know, this emergency powers may entail has been reported. One of them is that to allow environment of budgetary allocation to projects that are urgent without going back to the National Assembly. That kind of power, I, I, I think I would consider outrightly objectionable. I, I mean, it's, um, there is no sensible, responsible parliament that will give off those kinds of powers not just for its own sake alone as a parliament, but even in terms of for the protection of the citizens of the country. I mean, the, the, the legislature exists as a check. It's not just a, that, that, that function, that power, is not a power that is supposed to be, you know, that is intended for its own benefit, but for the benefit of the generality of the people. You know, so if you give up that kind of power, under the guise of an emergency power out of the kind of situation that we find of ourselves, then I think that, you know, that, that particular role of the legislature is the most central, is the most critical. The power of the legislature over the budget, over, over the pulse, is a power, if you give up of that, then we can as well pack our blood and leave the National Assembly. I think that, um, I think that, you know, because it's, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean the, the request would be, you know, the way you've said it. But I think that the problem has always been in terms of what is actually done, right? I mean, assuming, why not conceding, that National Assembly gives such powers to Mr. President, right, to act. Now, it's going to be a different ball game entirely in terms of how responsible will this power given to Mr. President be used? It's not just about Mr. President alone. Mr. President is going to use this power. Others are going to act on his behalf, right, in the executive. I mean, you have many ministers who are in charge of many ministries. You have many people and all that. You know, so, so, the, so the issue of the responsible use of this power is going to become a different matter entirely.